So we are here at Into the Woods. Sitting down, we got the pop-up chop-up. We got the Lincoln kind of room back here where I hung up a bunch of portfolio stuff. Um, yeah, it's great. We've had a great turnout. Weather's great. Workshops, uh, the host, everything. Everything's been amazing. So now we're going to sit down, shoot the shit with some people. I got my man here, Dan Stiles. Stoked to have him up here. Pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I met you through uh, Mark Bricky. Yeah, Mark Bricky introduced us. Uh, God, we had lunch together or something completely random we like did. that. But yep. uh, I actually knew who you were already because okay. uh, yep. we're sitting in a room, you probably can't see it, yep. of just fantastic design work. Like, just top tier design work. And so you guys have been on my radar for a while. Appreciate that. I've, I've known of you and, and your Instagram and the whole thing. And then the, the first Mark was up at our studio, and I think this is pre-COVID, when you guys did the Gambler 500. Yes, we and he's did, like, did the Gambler I'm, together. I'm doing the Gambler with Dan Styles. I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, he's building, uh, what did you do? Like a that was a uh, 1994 Geo Metro with something like 225,000 miles on it. <laughs> that was great. He showed me photos. You were like in the driveway carving out the, the wheel wells, and you went to leave, and the tires are rubbing. And well, like, so I, I built it, and I, I, you know, I would get in it and check myself, but yeah. then Mark showed up, and we put all our gear in it which yeah. made it like 600 pounds heavier than what i had built it for so once we got in there the springs like collapsed a little bit yeah. and the tires rubbed so i just cut all the wheel wells out <laughs> that's great that's rad well yeah man what do you so what do you think you've never so we're up here in skamania washington skamania lodge uh we kind of got this place we're doing the event this is your first time up here from portland this is i have driven by this place more times than i could probably count and kind of like i knew this was back here but yeah. it just it just never dawned on me to come up here but this place is fantastic it's cool huh yeah yeah, yeah a lot of people from portland uh, we have a bunch here and they're like i've driven past but never turned that corner to come out come out here you know yeah, uh, it's kind of like when you're going up over the mountains and there's, you know, all the ski resorts there. Like, if you don't ski, you might not drive up, but you yep. should definitely drive up because some of those resorts are crazy. Exactly, yep. No, that's cool. Um, have you sat in on any workshops or speakers? I just got out of yours. Oh, were you in it? Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, that was that. cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Um, yeah, it was an uh, hour, hour and a half workshop, and yeah, those are those are fun to do. Yeah, I think, you know... At the end of the day, what you stressed and what I think is really important for everybody to know is that, you know, you're kind of your own best salesperson. Like if you're true to yourself and you start making the work you want to be making, somebody's going to see that and want you to make that work for them. And and I know that sounds crazy, but that's kind of what you were saying, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's how yeah. I did it, too. Yeah. yeah, no, for sure. It's like and that's where we get so much of like you know, hey, we love, love what you do, and I want to do, build a studio or do something like Lincoln. It's like, no, they're like, this isn't for everybody, you know, and if this isn't who you are, then, you know, figure out who you are and go down that path, you know? Yeah. Because my path is not, probably not what you want to do, you know? Yeah, so. I think the first time I met you, I asked you, like, I think how much time you actually spend designing anymore, yeah. and you're like, yeah, yeah not so much, you yeah, know, because exactly. you were running a studio, yep. but like, yeah. You know, it, I like sitting behind the box. Like, yep. I, I'm a designer. I yep. opened a studio and they had a bunch of employees for a little while and it lasted like two years before yep. I was like, I hate this. Yeah. And no, so, sure. you know, but on the other hand, I think when you're working with a big studio like yours, you know, again, looking around the room here, you get a lot of different clients, a lot of yeah. variety, um, a lot of different types of projects. You know, that's really cool from yeah. where I'm sitting. Yeah. No, it is. Yeah. We have some fun projects and things. Yeah. Yeah. But that's where I've said, you know, it's, it's like there are so many paths in our careers that that you can take as a creative you know not everybody you know should strive to own a studio or you know or whatever you know like some some people thrive at freelance and that takes a certain person a certain personality and hope hopefully you figure that out quick you know and you dive into that path you know like you did you're like i don't want a studio i've had employees and i don't want that you know and you've been killing it with you with your work and yeah it was the tax paperwork that just i couldn't yeah, i couldn't do it anymore yeah, man. there's all that you know every piece <laughs> yeah and then i think one guy quit and then he wanted to get unemployment and i'm like uh, oh now i gotta like i don't i don't how do you have you ever had to do that like yes. file the paperwork uh, yeah. for unemployment yeah, yeah. That, that's like a week's worth of work right it there is. yeah no it's crazy and i, I mean, just like i said i just i just want to sit on and draw stuff and everything else happens in order to enable me to do that yes yeah yeah and that's where you know sometimes i struggle with that and i've talked about it in the workshop like i got into this business as a designer i still feel like i am a designer running a studio you know so i don't have all the business pieces of it figured out you know i'm, I'm figuring that out as i go um but yeah, and that's where I'm like, if you're a designer, or illustrator at heart, like, just just do that, dive into it, you know, and own it. And if a studio comes later on, and you want to start hiring one, two employees, and it 
and it ends up being something big, then great, you know, but don't jump off the cliff and go, this is what I want, and I want to go all in on a studio. You know? Yeah, I think a lot of people um, probably just see your work, honestly. What they want is your client roster. Yes. They, they maybe don't want your job, but yeah. they, they're like, oh, I want to yeah. do Hot Wheels. Yeah. You know, and I, they probably don't understand, you know, what what all of you need to do to make that happen yes. because it's not just it's not just the end result you know as designers as all designers know like there's a lot of work that comes before you see that end result yeah. and a lot of wheels have to turn so absolutely yeah yeah so what have you been up to lately what are you working on you know the people have been asking me that and i think probably the most interesting thing i'm working on right now is uh, i've been making what i call electronic posters which are posters that have uh, i heard about this yeah okay yes. so like i made one for jack white that was a theremin you put your hands up to it and it, it played music and stuff it's a, a bunch of stuff built into it okay. um so right now i'm working with u2 uh, and they're going to be uh, in the sphere in vegas like the big oh, new, yeah, venue. The new and so yeah. i'm trying to pitch an electric poster for them that's got a little screen built into it so okay. the poster itself has an LED component built into the poster itself. When we had dinner with Mark, you were talking about that. Mm -hmm. I found that fascinating. I'm like, wow, this is crazy. But at the same time, so like a lot of artists are not gonna, they're not motorheads. They're not gonna build a Gambler 500 car like you did. You know, that's what I thought was super interesting. When Mark's like, no, I'm doing a Dan Styles, and he built a car, and I'm like, oh shit. Like this dude like builds shit. So like you to be building posters now? I, I like actually, making things. You do, huh? And, like and one of the hands. things that kind of has <laughs> bummed me out as graphic design has moved forward, like back when I started and probably when you started, yep. it was ink on paper. Yes. At least some portion of what you did yep. was, was a hand-drawn, maybe hand-cut. Yep. A lot of that's gone away, and now you just jock your computer all day. And if you, if you want to really make stuff, you kind of got to find a way to make that happen because otherwise you're just going to be Adobe Illustrator all day long. And I love Adobe Illustrator, yeah. but sometimes I want to construct something. Yeah. And so whether it's I'm constructing a car or a poster or a pinball machine, oh, yeah. excuse me, pinball machine, like whatever it is, yeah. like, you know, I want to get in there and I want to see how it works. And, and I want to then take that knowledge and make something sort of unique and cool out of it. That's cool. That's cool. I, I need to see one of these posters. Yeah, well, they're on my Instagram, Dan Styles. I, gotta, I, gotta but, check it know, I can, yeah, uh, I can cool. also like you're yeah. close. Yeah, no, I, I was going to check it out. Yeah, I wanna, yeah, yeah show exactly. You some stuff. Yeah, yeah, this is all going to be based on the one I did for Mars Attacks, which has got like the alien, okay. but his eyes like track, nice. and so that had two tiny little screens built in. So I'm like, well, why can't I just do that with one big ass screen? Yeah, so. that's cool. That's very cool. So vector or raster? Absolutely vector all yeah. day. All, you know, <laughs> you like, just mentioned it. Yeah, the real I, uh, I know how to use Photoshop. I like Photoshop. But like even when it comes to like drawing, I prefer to draw with the blob brush in the Illustrator brush, yep. than to actually like use a, like a, a Kyle's brush yeah. in Photoshop. I'm just I'm so used to it now. And, okay. it, and if you look at my aesthetic, a lot of my aesthetic is kind of built around the limitations of Illustrator. Well, hell yeah, man. Thank you for driving up. And 20 minute ride up the gorge it was yeah. beautiful yeah no. top down that's you know, it was awesome. great <laughs> that's cool yeah i appreciate you coming out yeah. and checking it out thanks for having me right on thanks dan sitting down here with iron mike what's going what's, on what's man? up buddy how thanks are you having me Absolutely. I'm great it's awesome Absolutely. being out here yeah so we connected on linkedin that's right i uh so i run ironbound media we're a brand strategy and podcast production firm based in newark new jersey i am not a designer okay. uh, i outsource all my design but I, uh, I'm big on brand strategy, and I was looking on YouTube. I came across your Chop It Up show. Nice. I saw some of your uh, brand strategy breakdown things, and I was like, oh, this is dope. And then I reached out to you yep. to see if you would come on my podcast, Dog with some Brandon. You were like, I'm kind of head down right now working on this conference, but maybe afterwards. And then I said, send me the link to what yep. you did. I checked it out. I was like, okay, this is cool. And I ended up signing up for it. And so here I am in. Port, not Portland. Where are we at? Washington? Yeah, we're in Washington. Skamania, Washington, yeah. Stevenson. Yep. I thought I was in Portland because this lady at the <laughs> bar was like, what brought you to Washington? I was like, I'm in Portland. What are you talking about? <laughs> She's um, like, nah, Portland looks a lot different than this. <laughs> uh, but here's the interesting thing, right? As a veteran entrepreneur, I go to like veteran entrepreneurial conferences, yep. but I definitely feel like this is more of my tribe, man. Like is I'm it? not a yeah. suit and tie. Okay. I always have an existential crisis when I think I got to wear a blazer <laughs> and a V-neck, but out here, everyone's just so chill. Yeah. We all have beards. It's <laughs> yeah. like, it's amazing. There's a beard thing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, that's cool. I'm, I'm grateful you committed, came out, you know, and I'm going to be on your podcast after this for sure. Yeah. You know? Looking forward to it. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, it's cool. So tell, I mean, tell me a little bit more about the podcast and the veteran and kind of in your boxer. Yeah, so my story kind of started with boxing. So I was okay. a three-time national boxing champion, two-time most viable boxer, K-1 
captain my boxing team at the United States Naval Academy oh, um, in Annapolis, damn. Maryland. Uh, there weren't too many people at school that looked like me. Okay. I felt yeah. more in common with the kids I trained and sparred with at inner city gyms in yeah. Baltimore, D.C., New York City, et cetera. And so that kind of planted the seed in the back of my mind that when I got out the military, I want to start a boxing program similar to the Naval Academy because at these inner city gyms, a lot of times these kids feel like their only option is to turn pro or go to the streets. And I feel like that's a broken system because yeah. if you go to West Point, Navy, Air Force, we box, but then we graduate, serve our country as officers in the military, and then get out and start businesses, work in corporate America, et cetera. And so I want to bring that to the inner city and so after cool. I deployed to Afghanistan, Japan, and the Philippines as a Marine, I moved to Newark, New Jersey, and started what became Ironbound Boxing. Damn, that's cool. That's super rad. Shit, so you're, are you still in there boxing and punching Still people? coaching. Oh, yeah. um, the gym is, is packed. You know, um, We've been very blessed lately. Got donations from the UFC, wow. uh, Dick Sporting Goods, you know, because of brand. Okay. You know, we've yeah, just yeah. kind of been around a while, yeah. and people know we've been in there fighting a good fight. Yeah. And I actually got into podcasting and brand building during the pandemic because mm. I had a for-profit side of Ironbound Boxing I was trying to get going, teaching corporate boxing to companies in the New York City metro area. Yeah. But when the pandemic hit, <laughs> the social distancing, yes. you yeah. know, the shut boxing, the gym yeah, down, the on-site yeah. classes weren't going, yeah. and I kind of got into podcasting. And so, you know, I think you talk about it at your company too, about spending 10 to 15% of your time yeah. working on, you know, the whole Lincoln design kind of mm -hmm. brand identity. Internal. But a lot of companies, they teach individuals to always kind of nurture these ideas over here. And so as entrepreneurs, you know, when one revenue stream dries up, you got to be able to pull another lever. And so I planted this in the back of my mind about, oh, I could do podcasts, but I want to do it like more agencies. So just like you hire someone to do a website or yeah. build a logo for you, I said, hey, they can hire us to do their podcasting. So I won't get... I won't monetize off of uh, ads. I'll monetize off the production side of the house. So that drew me to just kind of the agency business model in general. And so I start following that because I felt like I had more in common with, you know, the bootstrapped entrepreneur types that you see in agencies as opposed to, you know, like the venture capital and yada, yada. So yeah. that's kind of how I got started. That's cool. I mean, it's cool to hear that, you know, you <clears throat> being in the brand, loving, loving brand and brand design is what's drawn you know, UFC and some of these bigger companies to you and, and to notice you, you know, like you have a great logo. It's, you don't have it on right now, but, um, and everything. So I'm sure they notice and they go, what the yeah. hell's going on here? You know? And I like building brands from the ground up. I think that's, what's cool about the design community is cause y'all do it over and over. I don't think people really can appreciate what it takes to make people give a damn about something yeah. that you came up with in your head. And then you see it on shirts and on hats. I mean, I just feel like, um, that's been the biggest eye opener for me being at this conference is just kind of like the style and the, I don't know, y'all are just different. Like you're more <laughs> chill. We don't take ourselves <laughs> too serious. And you know, business can just get stale. It's like boring. You go to these yeah. conferences, people just want to sit up there and talk about themselves. Yes. But it was less about the venture capital and raising money. I feel like you all were focused on like the craft, mm -hmm. which I think is cool about this conference. Yeah, that's cool. That's what we were trying to, you know, do it a little bit different. There's a lot of conferences, and they're all good. They're all great. We go to them. Um, but we did want it to be the speakers, the workshop, kind of the curation of everything, like to feel a little bit different, speak, you know, a little bit different. It wasn't, you know, a bunch of people showing their portfolio, yeah. you know, a little bit more to it than that. So. And everyone's super nice, too. Yeah. Like, I'm kind of self-conscious because I, I, I'm literally at the stick figure drawing phase at yeah. this point. Yeah. But everybody's like, you got to start somewhere, yeah. you know, and uh, – I didn't know James Martin was going to be speaking, yeah. um, but I bought his book because when yeah. I started like beginners to graphic design or logos, yeah. whatever, his stuff popped up and I bought yeah. it. So that's it's, cool. It's cool. Hell yeah. 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 James is great. And we're fortunate enough to have him here. Yeah. Well, hell yeah, man. I'm stoked that you're here. Glad you made the, the trip out. And when this thing ends and, and we put all this crap away yeah. and uh, you and I are going to jump on your podcast and, and chop it up. <laughs> Absolutely, man. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks for having cool. me. Yeah, right on, man. Sitting here with Dan. Dan <laughs> from Dino Creative. What's happening? Hey, what's up, Dan? Not much. How you doing? I'm doing great. This has been s such an awesome event. It's It's been great to have the whole team here and like get to see you folks and also just all the awesome speakers and, you know, wonderful weather. This is, uh, yeah. we're down from in Orange County and... Uh, you always have wonderful weather. I mean... <laughs> You know, hey, we we get a little bit of, 
it, at least it's not on fire up here. True. Well, that's that's what, true. That's what we get in our area yeah, sometimes. That is true. But so how many uh, how many of the crew did you bring up? So we got uh, we got three other people. Okay. And yep. you know we got a team of like six people. Okay. So yeah. Cool. Yeah. It it's been great. I mean, everybody's. I think everybody's going to come out and be super pumped to awesome. like get going and being creative again. Yeah, that's great. Um, have you been to other creative conferences and things in the past? Yeah, so like, I mean, we've we always go to like Designer Con and like, yep. you know, AIGA events or mm -hmm. Adobe Max and, yep. you know, all those different things. And, and this is, I think, one of the cool things that I kind of liked about this was you were trapped. Yep. <laughs> like, and, and I think that's obviously on purpose, yep. but like, you know, nobody can go anywhere yeah. and you just kind of go and you leave the, leave the event and then you go and you, you hang out with, with your new friends. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. That was definitely the idea of, you know, just a, a retreat style conference, you know, where everyone's the same place, stay the same place. You can't leave really. Um, so you're going to run into each other day after day, you know, yeah. eating, eating dinner in the workshop, whatever it is. So nice. Yeah, that was that was the idea. Yeah. So first time up here, though, I mean, uh, I have I have an awesome friend that actually it was how I got into being a creative. Uh, so he went to school down in uh, uh, San Luis Obispo. That's where I'm originally I'm from. His name is James and he uh, James DeRoso, and he actually lives here in Portland. And well, we're not in Portland, but uh, and and I learned to tear paper and be creative from him when I was young, and it was just it was one of my first experiences of, of being able to f see and feel like I'm a I can be a creative. Yeah. Somebody out there, because my family owned a screen printing shop when I was young, That's and cool. I could. Um, we could make t-shirts we could someone could be paid to do work yeah. and and it was creative yeah and and i'd be interested to he to s see kind of the the amount of people that have had that early experience mm -hmm. of uh s having somebody showing them that hey you can have this job because you think yeah. about it how many actors had an actor parent yeah or no, you know how many people were a creative had a creative member in their family yeah. or a creative friend i mean did you have a cre any creative members of your family no no my dad my dad worked construction and no nobody in the creative field i mean it was honestly like we did our workshop it honestly all came from skateboarding and growing up in in san diego you know that seeing the graphics surfing boards snowboards um that got me started in it yeah. but but no you're right there's like so many you know, I would assume that the screen printing company in, in that background, like, had an in influence on you, you know? Yeah. Like, you were around it. Yeah. Exactly. I yeah. mean, I'm pulling screens, blasting, yeah. you know, you know, washing out the screens, all that fun yeah. stuff. And it's, and seeing that that is something that you can do. Yeah. That had a huge, huge influence on, on, on that type of understanding. Yeah. But. No, that's cool. All right. So, got to ask the question. So, vector or raster? And so why? I'm vector. Okay. I'm I'm 100 percent like yep. vector, or day. Yep. And and then a lot of the other members of the team are raster. And then I'm just like, just you learn how to use the blob brush <laughs> and like paint in vectors. And yeah. and it's like, oh no, but it's so much easier. And then you just live trace it. And I'm like, yeah. <sighs> yeah. So yes. Yeah. Vector and for me. Vector for you. Cool. Well, hell yeah. Well, yeah. hopefully you coming out here to Into the Woods, your team leaves inspired and, yeah. you know, you guys learn a few things and, and made some connections. You know, like I've always talked about, like the big thing you pull out of this is the people you meet and the connections and, you know, and the friends that you meet here that you'll take along, you know, so. Yeah. It means a lot to actually have a conversation with somebody yeah. rather than be like, oh, hey, Internet. Yeah. Like we're not real yeah yeah no no so yeah well, well, well thank you so much absolutely we're stoked that you came out and we we noticed when you bought the four tickets i'm like oh shit four tickets like <laughs> you know we would watch every sale come in you know um but it was cool to see i'm like yeah. okay hell yeah he's bringing the team yeah yeah it's and that's that's the thing yeah so hopefully next time we'll also bring some clients to come and party there you go there yeah. you go cool. all right awesome all right dan thanks Later. man i got jimmy from atomic child
I'm having a great time, man. Yeah? Thank you guys for putting all the work into this event. This has been really great. Absolutely. Well, you uh, you stepped up. You sponsored the event. You kicked in. Like We're super, super grateful for your help that you uh, wanted to be a sponsor of this thing and, and kicked in on it. Yeah, man. No problem. Thank you for letting me be a part of it. Yeah, really for sure. Really glad to be a part of it. Yeah, we've been watching your brand grow over the years. And, um, I mean, like I was telling you, we were up here scouting – this area last weekend i was doing some measurements and we went to a shop down here in stevenson washington and we're in there and my wife's like looking around and i'm like holy shit there's like all this atomic child stuff hanging up and i'm like i took a photo and then i never got busy <laughs> i never ended up sending it to you but i but believe you i believe you yeah i wanted to be like dude do you know that like down the street from the event that you're coming to they uh, carry all your shit um, but yeah so how is that going like your brand is growing and yeah just for like the the quick story i mean it, I started in a little two-bedroom apartment um you know we were just doing markets locally doing that all the time and then uh you know about a year into doing that we were lucky enough to make a connection at rei and then they were like wanted they were like wanted us to go nationwide with some of our products in rei so then obviously that just like blows up your whole business you know yeah. um so then that just kind of took it to a whole nother level and then once you get into a higher level retail like that i'm sure as you know working with larger clients other large clients are like cool yep. you can be trusted you follow through on what you say so then our then our retail grew a lot and we started getting outside sales reps and then it's just kind of we're probably it's between 400 500 different retailers across the united states we do, we do uh national parks a lot of national parks as well no shit yeah i did not know it was that many retailers yeah it's it's been a crazy th it's Too been bad. a crazy thing man i mean it was it's one of those things where i just wanted to like draw and not work for somebody yeah and then um you know now i have employees and a warehouse and so it's definitely gone uh, beyond the original first vision yeah the original plan but that sounds like yeah good. I mean, that's, that's good yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah exactly we can all it's like, good to have problems when you're trying to just solve things and not being like what are we gonna do so yeah that's awesome man shit so how how long now did you like quit a job like jump off and say i'm doing this thing full time yeah so i, I kind of did the typical route of where graduated art school you know 2002 which was a completely different world and did you mention um, you went to the art institute in denver i didn't there oh, was okay. another local college okay. called rocky mountain College. yes rocky Design. mountain yep. uh, back then it was a tiny little college and two little buildings but now it has a nice campus but anyways graduated from that and then i just had a regular job that i worked in college and then I was like 23 and I was able to have a 401k and regular pay. So I ended up staying there. Um, and then I just started doing uh, after, you know, just doing freelance after work. And then I got into, uh, you know, band merch and I did that for about a decade after work. I was just doing it over and over. And then um, I finally got into doing, um, we started, I worked for a company where I was an art director. We were making products. And then I was, you know, I was able to be, uh, I worked there for four and a half years. And then I was like, well, why am I not creating my own products? Yeah. Um, somebody on AID encouraged people to make their own products and sell them. <laughs> the world. Uh, so I did that. And Mark then that's Ricky. just kind of where it started. And everything has taken off since then. That's awesome, dude. I mean, there's a lot of people that, you know, building a brand and selling a product or a product line or brand to like an REI, like that's, that's tough. A lot of people would love to be in that position and be able to do that. And that's cool. Props yeah. to you. Yeah. That's, you know, it's one of those things where you have to take that risk and do it because they're like, can you handle this? And obviously for something you've never done before, you just say yes. <laughs> and, and obviously I've never done it figure before, it out. Yeah. but it's like, if you don't take that risk, then they're not going to come back later and be like, well, did you figure it out yet? So <laughs> yeah, right. it's completely life changing. That's true. That's true. Well, that's great. And you're out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Yep, Fort Collins. We were yeah. in Denver for a long time. And then about four years ago, we moved up to Fort Collins. Okay. Awesome. Damn. Well, I'm a fan. I see your work all over. Thanks, dude. Yeah. I'm a fan of you. I'm yeah. a fan of the, the old company you used to work under yeah. and then been following Lincoln forever, man. You guys are an inspiration. Thanks, man. I love it. How uh, Have you been to other conferences before? Uh, yeah, I've been to a few different ones. Uh, I've been to Creative South and Crop. So, okay. Yeah. yeah, cool. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Well, I'm glad you, uh, you got involved in ours and yeah. We're stoked to have you on board. Yeah, thanks, man. I uh, hope you guys uh, do it again. <laughs> yes, yes, we got we got plans. We can't we can't not because uh, this turned out really good. So yeah. we're we're definitely happy with the way the whole thing unfolded and and the speakers and vendors and sponsors and everything came together. So. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, not just saying it, but I feel like you guys kind of really raise the bar on conferences so cool and this is just your first one so i can't even imagine <laughs> yeah. what the second one's gonna yeah, be like yeah yeah i appreciate that all right so we got a question for everyone so vector or raster and why 
I'm a raster guy. Uh, I've been using Photoshop for 23 years now, um, and uh, I just feel like I just feel like uh, Adobe Illustrator overly complicates all tasks. So <laughs> raster forever. Okay. Uh, okay. If you actually see this, though, learn a Illustrator. Everybody's supposed to know Illustrator, but <laughs> I'm lucky enough to be able to still use Photoshop full time. That's cool, cause cause your graphics and and everything, a lot of them look like they're done in Illustrator. Like they're very clean, very perfect. Like yeah, I'm just using no brush sets or nothing. I'm just using a hard round in Photoshop okay. with a mouse. That's how I create all my work. That's cool. And Shit, I've just I would been doing never... it that way forever. So really, yeah. Okay. I, I grabbed Procreate and it was awesome, but I was just like, I've been doing this so long, I can knock it out in like a you know hours. So it's like yeah, trying to learn it over and start over. It's just yeah, that's cool. I learned something today. I had no idea. All right, so we're back. Chop up. I have Mahala sitting down. Uh, if you don't know her, she is very, very important to this whole freaking deal. Um, Mahala is the producer of this event. She has rocked it from uh, from day one. Uh, we couldn't have done this without her. Like putting on an event, you know, I don't, I don't know. We committed to this thing, and I don't think I fully under understood the scope of a producer, project manager, and, and like those roles to like really put this on and bring it all together, you know? I think at some point, and I said this about um, Mark and kind of being the MC and running the stage, I think at some point I thought to myself, I was gonna I was gonna do the stage stuff and I was gonna do your job, you know, type of yeah, thing. Yeah, oh man. <laughs> yeah, oh man, oh man is right. Like I quickly realized like, holy shit, good thing we brought Mahela on, so. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much for everything you've done here and uh, and this whole event. And, Absolutely. And bringing you on, so we've worked together on the One Moto Show Abs for the yes. last couple yes. of years, you know. And we uh, we asked you to come on and help us out with this. And you were like, I've never done a creative conference, but I've produced a shit ton of shows, and I can't be that hard. Um, so what do you think now that we're kind of getting to the end? Creative conference, a bunch of geeky designers running around. Like, what what are your thoughts compared to like other shows and yeah. I mean, honestly, like this is the exact type of event that I love to do because in my mind, events are, s it's all about people, right? And, and every event has its own unique community. Yep. And that's one of the things that I love about it. And everyone that is in the Lincoln design community has been such like incredibly friendly, creative, interesting humans. Cool. And I've I've yet to have a boring conversation this weekend. That's so I'm I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> that's awesome. That's cool. It's great to hear. Well, I mean, you know with, you know, events, the logistics that go into the to making it happen and bringing it all together mm -hmm. on the day of, you know, prep up up to it. Mm -hmm. Um I thought for sure there was going to be something, you know, something's missing. We just blew it on on some level. It's our first event ever, you know, we've never yep. done this. Yep. Um and and knock on wood, we still got a couple hours left, but uh <laughs> but this thing has went off uh I would say to this point flawless and and it's exceeded my expectations in a lot of ways. That's like awesome. it honestly has. So yeah. That's so awesome. Props to you and yeah. Thank you. I mean I appreciate that, and an event takes, it, it, the success of an event is directly correlated with the strength of a team, right? Yeah. And I feel so stoked and honored to have been brought into like the Lincoln team to work on this project and to bring it to life because it's been inspiring in a lot of ways to see the way that you guys work together and the the culture of the office mm -hmm. and you know just to like see the way that you guys hang and have fun but also like get shit done <laughs> um and so it's been it's just been really cool to see everyone like take on their respective roles for the event and bring it together and the reason that it went off without a hitch yes is because we planned the shit out of it but yeah. it's also because every single person showed up and went above and beyond yeah. in their particular roles you yeah. know and it was the entire the entire lincoln team played yep. a huge role in this event yeah yeah it's crazy i mean everybody had their roles um and then there there was things kind of left you know left kind of open to see what happened when we were here and everyone's just ready to grab it pick it up mm -hmm. help with whatever Mm -hmm. you know service the attendees that we have here like yeah it's been it's been crazy and i think you know 
you don't know how certain people are going to, you know, if they're going to thrive in a situation like this or not, you know, and everybody on yep. the team is just like, boom, this is great. Let's go. Like, what else can I do? You know, what can I help with? So it's been so yeah, fun. It's been cool. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you, all you've done for this thing. Thank and you. we're not going to do another one without you. Thanks, so, Dan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right on. Thank you, Mahela.